when you get this nice little letter saying you're under a special investigative unit or an audit, we are getting these letters left, right, and center, or send me a letter of medical necessity along with your medical records, then now doctors writing these additional notes of medical necessity on top of submitting the um, medical record. It is really important to understand that all is not lost. There are ways to get around this, utilizing a corrective action plan and negotiations with payers. That is outstanding currently is considered AR because there's no cycle anymore. So how you tackle that AR is up to you and your third party biller or your in-house billing team. But you have to understand that at some point you have to say, I can no longer keep this money out there. It's been six months, I haven't seen a payment, what do I do? Accrued AR services is dual fold and that's where we kind of come in. So when we talk about AR and pursuing AR, there are two levels to this. Forensic <coughs> billing services and clinical audit oversight training. I want to be very clear that attacking AR from a professional level has very little to do with your third party biller. It doesn't mean they did anything wrong. They could have done everything wrong, but it doesn't mean that they did. This is twofold. It does not operate the same way a third party biller does. A forensic billing service, which we provide at Panacea, a forensic billing person goes in and claims scrubs line by line. The first thing is to see are there any errors in the code. Because even though your provider may have, uh, I'm sorry, your, your uh, third party biller may have been well versed on codes, recently we had a switch up with some Blue Cross codes. They'll just do that to you in the middle of the year. They'll just stop paying on a code and then you can go searching through dirt to try to figure out the next code to use that will pay you on this particular service. And that is a difficult process. So we're going line by line scrubbing to see if the proper code was attached. And it's not the same code for every single service across payers. Some want a rev code, some want a CPT code, some want a rev code for certain times and not other times, some want the S code. There's a science to this. It's not as easy as hiring a tech and putting them into a room to do your billing and coding. It just isn't. Long are those days. Clinical chart audits, oversight, and training. This is twofold. Once the forensic billing is done, it flips to a clinical consultant. There is no way to work accrued AR services without a clinical consultant. Somebody needs to be able to determine the level of medical necessity and the errors in the chart and be able to author that story for you. So the claim is now denied, you're in an SIU, what do you do with the money? If there are no errors in billing, because those can get reprocessed through forensic billing, a clinical consultant needs to come in and determine what happened in that chart. I recently had a case where the person was getting denied because they were billing for PHP for the day and there weren't enough hours in the day of clinical care. It seems simple enough. The truth is, when you have somebody in PHP, they're there. 90% of the time, they are there. They may have walked out of group, they may have had a meltdown, they may be kicking and screaming and throwing stuff in the hallway, but they are there, and there's some level of intervention. Has it been documented, even if it's not in the group? They need to be trained on how to document those interventions. We have been able to successfully fight cases and get re reimbursement negotiations based on the fact that, so they didn't have five hours of group this particular day or six hours of group, depending on the payer, but they, they had three hours. The other three hours, one time they stepped out to see the ARMP and they gave the ARMP problem, so the ARP gave them a smoke break. There's a story there, and you need somebody to author that story for you.